This is the action-centered leadership model developed by John Adair. I mention this partly because it's a trademark belonging to John Adair, so he needs to be credited, but mainly because it's a truly excellent model. Its simplicity provides a blueprint for the leadership and management of any team. I say leadership and management because they're not the same thing. Good leaders are not necessarily great managers, and people with great management skills aren't always great leaders. The model shows the three elements of all leadership situations, achieving the task, developing the team, and developing individuals. These overlap to demonstrate that they're dependent on each other, as well as being separately essential. Achieving the task. This is usually the achievement of a set target. Effective teams all share the same goal, so this needs to be clear from the offset, since this is often why the team was brought together in the first place. This involves identifying and defining the task, creating a plan and establishing responsibilities, developing the team. It's quite likely that the task will only be achieved if the team work together, so the team itself needs to be focused on. Establishing standards of performance, resolving conflict, communicating on team progress, that sort of thing. Developing individuals. People on the team still have their own needs, which also need to be met, as well as the overall needs of the team. For the leader, this means understanding personality, skills, strengths and fears, offering support and recognizing individual contributions. The leader, let's call him John, of course, has to balance the three elements all at the same time. Because if one is ignored, the others are certainly unlikely to succeed. The fiddly part is that the three elements can conflict with each other. Pressure of the goal increases pressure on the group to concentrate on the task, to the possible detriment of the people involved. But if too much time is taken to create a good team spirit without paying enough attention to the goal, it's likely to mean that the team will lose its focus. So you see why leader John has to balance all three elements to get to this lovely middle part of the model here. He can do this by identifying the requirements of the task, communicating this to the team, planning the achievement of the task with the team, identifying resources with the team and allocate individual responsibility, and monitoring team progress towards the task and feeding back to individuals with appropriate praise and encouragement. The simplicity and practicality of the action-centered leadership model is sure to set John on his way to being a great leader giving him the tools he needs to start his leadership journey.